From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Okay. Okay. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Once again, we have a very powerful program for you today because we're going to be dealing with some headlines that, oh, move my heart, and I believe they're going to open many eyes out there. The first one, thousands of online ISIS followers in the United States. They're using that to get more people to follow them. ISIS is really here, friends. One more, no more Christians in the Middle East within two years. Can you believe that one? That's where it all started in the Middle East, and now they're eradicating them there. And then Hamas says, holy obligation to attack Israel from Judah and Samaria. Wow, I can't believe this. They're going to invade Israel and do their attacking right there? I'm so very move to have to reveal some things to you today, but I do want to share this before we get into the program. Uh, Jack has had to have some very serious surgery, and thank the Lord he's well on his way to recovery. You've been seeing him right up until last week's program, Memorial Day, but uh, we did that ahead of time. He said, you know, I think I better do some programs ahead while I'm healing there in the hospital. Isn't he smart? But he's doing very, very well. But put him on your prayer list, please, that God will bring him back very, very soon. But in the meantime, we're going to be carrying the program around the world with some very special guests. In fact, I mentioned this to Jack, and he said, oh, Carl. So he's very happy to have our first guest with us. It is Dr. Carl Baugh, and he is the one who founded and is the director of Creation Evidence, just not far from Dallas, Texas, where he has the museum. And I want to welcome you today, Dr. Baugh, to the Thank you, Dr. Program. Rexella. It's such a joy to be here and to stand in for my buddy, Dr. Oh, yes. Jack Van Impey. Oh, yes. You know, I don't have closer people on earth than the two of you. Oh, thank you so much. What a compliment that is. And, and Jack and I feel the same way, Carl. We thank really, you. really do. But I want to get into something. You know, scientists always want to have evidence, don't they? And uh, before we get into those headlines that I mentioned a moment ago, I'm going to refer to his Creation Evidence Museum. How many dinosaurs do you have there in that museum? Well, Dr. Rexella, I've had the privilege of discovering and directing the excavation of 16 different dinosaurs, technical names from Acrocanthosaurus to Stegosaurus. And at the museum, we have in storage components of those dinosaurs, and in time, we'll have them on display. We're in the process of prepping the bones. Some of those bones are larger than you. Uh, some of those bones weigh 450 pounds, one single dinosaur Whoa. femur. It's a very exciting enterprise. Wow, Carl, that's really, really exciting. And uh, how many digs have you been on? I mean, you're going to go on another one pretty soon. Aren't you looking for dinosaurs? In fact, I came to Detroit just to be with my dear friends and to do what I could to assist them. Uh, I just left one dig in Kansas, and I'm en route to Colorado where we'll be excavating a, a triceratops, a juvenile triceratops. But you ask how many digs I've been on. Uh, I've directed excavations in South America and in Israel, throughout Texas, uh, and in Colorado, Kansas. And it's wow. very exciting, but not nearly as exciting as the prophecy and the biblical truth found on this program. Oh, thank you so much, Carl. We agree that God's Word is the most exciting thing that we could ever read and believe in. But one more thing. You know, uh, while I was in the hospital with my husband, one of the doctors came in. We were discussing having Dr. Baugh on our program, and I said, you know who our first guest is going to be, doctor? And he said, no, who? I said, well, he went on with other scientists uh, a trip to Turkey. And they went to Mount Ararat, and I'm going to let you, Dr. Ba tell you the evidence that they found there supporting Noah's Ark. 
Can you believe that one? Noah's Ark. And he was so excited about that, Carl. Well, I'm pleased he's excited. I continue to be excited. In 1990, I climbed Mount Ararat. I was co-director of the expedition. Dr. Don Shockey and I, along with Robert Summers, were the advance uh, expeditionary members. We knew where to look because we had some advance satellite information from ground penetrating radar and we were able to site an area where I personally saw a huge beam of laminated wood precisely in the area where the satellite information indicated a large organic component of a wooden structure would be. Now that laminated wooden beam is very important because that's essentially what gopher wood is. Oh, uh -huh. uh, Rexella, I hold a patent. You probably don't know. No. I, I hold a patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office on the gopher process to construct a marine vessel. Oh. I received it July 8, 2014. Right. Uh -huh. And essentially, the word gopher means to house in. And when applied to wood, gopher wood, then would be a wooden structure that is completely encased in what we term structural interlamination, where every single component is structurally interlaced with every other component and sealed together with a resinous pitch. Now, the pitch of the ark was not simply asphalt painted on the outside for waterproofing, daubed on the inside for insulation, as most people think. But if you read the Hebrew very closely, it indicates very clearly that the pitch was to penetrate within and without every component of the structure. And that's the way I got the patent because no one had ever envisioned a completely structurally interlaminated marine vessel. But that essentially is what the Hebrew is saying. And we built a 25-foot scale replica of Noah's Ark Marvelous. to display to the public. Right. Isn't that exciting? You know, the thing that impresses me so very, very much, we don't have to have evidence, but scientists almost demand evidence of what's in the Bible. And for these gentlemen, for Dr. Baugh to find all of this and say, all right, here's some proof. You want some proof? Here it yes. is. How great that is, Dr. Yes. Bob. I appreciate that so much. Well, I'm going to go back to something that Jack and I discussed and that we put on the screen. And then we're going to go on with the modern day headlines that I gave to you a moment ago. But take a look, please, at some training camps of ISIS right here in the United States. There they are. And my, oh, my, they've talked about the bombings and murders, the criminal activity, and so forth. And then another makes it very, very plain exactly where they're located. You know what? Denver and Oak Hill and so many others. Hancock, New York. Some I would not dare think would be one that they would pick out. Houston, Texas. Yes. Not too far from you there, Dr. Ball. And I would like to go back to something that Jack had to say about the Bible and what it says when they invade your land. What to do when they invade your land. That's what they're doing, friends. They're invading our land. They're here already, ISIS. Take a look, please, at what he said. Listen to this, Ezekiel 33, 3, Old Testament prophet. He says, when you see the sword coming upon your land, blow the trumpet and warn my people that God has called Dr. Jack Van Impey and Dr. Rexella to warn the world. And we've been under some threats, but we're going to keep warning the world because the hour is coming that's going to get so bad that life won't be worth living. Now, in Revelation chapter 6 to 18, there are 21 different judgments. And as I said earlier, in Matthew 24, 37, one of the main ones is terrorism. Now, how bad does it get? It's going to be bad for the Jew and the Christian. The Bible says in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, the last for that day is great, so that none is like it. None. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. Listen to Jesus in Matthew 24, 21. He said, for then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. Now, in Revelation 6, 9, 
He says, I saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held in Revelation 20, verse 4. He says, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded again for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Arabs, radicalism, has a special way of killing people. Number one, Surah 533 is crucifixion, and Surah 47.4 is beheading. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coming. And if you should be left behind, because I believe we're going to be raptured out of here soon, but if you're left behind, remember this. There's a crown for those who die for Jesus. Revelation 2.10. Be faithful unto death. He says, now give you a crown of life. Didn't he hit that right on the head when you see them come on your land, blow the trumpet? So many people that I've talked to about the camps here in the United States, they say, what? They're not aware. I thank God so much that Jack has felt we need to blow that trumpet and yes. let people know what's happening. Well, they're not only here with camps, but they're also here, thousands of them, online with their message and they're giving poisonous propaganda to the people and trying to bring them in with them, thousands of online ISIS followers in the United States. Again, experts warn ISIS is defeating, whoa, America online. U.S. tightens security at military bases. Well, there's a reason there. They have to because they need to have that security. And then once again, ISIS sending pros for next what U.S. attack? We'll never forget 9-11. They've got one planned. And since that happened in Garland, Texas, they realize that they're going to attack someday. ISIS camp a few miles from Texas. Mexican authorities confirm. Now they say it's only a few miles from El Paso. So we better be aware. Now, our guest today, as I mentioned, is from Texas. And I'm going to ask him a very, very serious question. We've had threats. They're threatening America. They're not afraid to do that. In fact, we've had more threats just recently here in America than we had in the last 30 years. Dr. Ball, that's very, very serious. It is very serious, and it's quite disconcerting because these attacks in Garland, suburb of Dallas, occurred just up the road from where I live and within two or three miles of part of my own family. Mm. And these recruits, these individuals untrained, were recruited by social media. And uh, they, they didn't even sign up. They just volunteered because they had been, by social media, contacted. How many tens of thousands of others are being so recruited? Now, this is the disconcerting thing. And I think Dr. Van Epe hit, as you said, hit the nail right on the head. He brought the issues out when we're threatened and particularly with a spiritual enemy, which involves not only how we behave in life, but what we believe and uh, our anticipation for eternity. He always quotes the Bible, the Word of God, for his authority. And he demonstrated the fact that we should be ready for any persecution, but we shouldn't simply sit there and say, let them take over at all. Now, in early centuries, the Christians were noted to have had three responses to Diocletian, the emperor who exercised 10 separate persecutions. The first response was to just get in a fight because it's a fight. That is not the response that Dr. Van Impey is encouraging us to have. And we shouldn't just get in a fight because there's a fight. The second response was that some individuals acquiesced and said, if that's the way to survive, I'll join them. Well, now, wait a minute. There's more to life than preserving this physical life. For we have to face the Creator and the one who died for our sins, and we're going to live for eternity. So that's not a good decision either. The third decision the early Christians made, and made it consistently, was once it was obvious that they could not, could not live in that regime, some went into the catacombs in Rome, and their children died within six months, but they paid the price, whatever the price is, but they would not deny their Lord. Now, Dr. Rexella, there is a disconcerting caveat, a slight inference to what's going on. In these Islamic homes, and I've spent some time in the Middle East, 
I, I spent long weeks and even months day-to-day uh, -day sleeping in certain homes of individuals who held this persuasion. There are very kind-hearted individuals who have been caught up in this movement. Yet, their mandate, their scripture, tells them that at the right moment, even if they have to pretend to be kind to a Christian or a Jew, or even pretend to be converted to Christianity or Judaism, that that is all right as long as ultimately at the right moment they will participate in jihad. So it's not only the Islamic State ISIS cells that are being formed, but the influence that they have on tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of families that are working next door to Christian people and their children, their young men especially, are reading from their own scriptures that they're to kill the Christians and the Jews as quickly as possible. All of that is brooding. So the threats that you mentioned, more threats have occurred in the last few weeks okay. than in the last 30 years combined. I'd say lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. Oh, amen to that, Dr. Ba. You know, the thing that really impresses me is that the things that he was talking about is found in the Quran. It's okay to lie. It's okay to be deceitful if it promotes your cause, right? Isn't that's, that correct? That's what they teach, and that's what the Quran. And if Dr. Van Impey were here, he could quote the exact surah, the chapter where it's found. Yeah, it's in there. That's for sure. And then something also: the war on Christians hasn't stopped in the Middle East. It's going on. Friends, my heart is broken over some of these headlines that you're going to see right now. War on Christians. ISIS goes on church burning and kidnapping spree. Now, here's one country, Syria. Going on, India. Rash of attacks on Christians fuels climate of fear. Again, not just Jews. Christians under increasing attack in Europe. My word, all of Jack's relatives live in Belgium. They're afraid to go downtown Brussels. Discrimination revealed UK Christians have to keep faith hidden. Oh, I never dreamed that I would see that in Britain. And then here's a new report confirms Christians in Britain face widespread discrimination. Now, that was given out by the Archbishop there of Canterbury. And again, Christians herded into the sea and gunned down. That's in Somalia. Oh, here's another country. No more Christians in Mideast. Are you kidding? Within two years. And that is found in the Arab countries there. They won't be there anymore. Within two years, they're being persecuted. Two Muslims set fire to a 14-year-old Christian boy in Pakistan. And then ISIS surrounds the few remaining Christian villages. Here's another, Syria. Italian police, Libyan Muslims threw Christians overboard. And then Islamic State releases new killing video of Ethiopian Christians. And another, Syrian Archbishop warns Christians could disappear from the country. Now, you want to know something? There is something revealed in the Bible, and I'm going to ask Dr. Ba about this. Will we only be persecuted as Christians within that one area? But I think the Bible reveals that Christians will be hated of all nations. No matter where we are, they're going to hate Christianity. Is that correct, Dr. Jesus Paul? himself said that you'll be hated of all nations. And we ask the question, why? Specifically in the Quran, Christianity in Judaism, Christians and Jews are mentioned as infidels to be removed from the face of the earth. Why? When Ataturk took over Turkey in the early 1900s and renamed Constantinople to Istanbul, the record shows that they would herd thousands of Armenian Christians into buildings and set it on fire. Why such atrocities? And the record shows that when they conquered Smyrna, they literally drove tens of thousands of people into the sea, and those who would not get into the sea because already there were so many bodies, they, they couldn't find a place to drown, literally. Eyewitnesses use that phrase. 
they would set them on fire. Why such atrocities? Well, there's a reason. Christianity is the only religion ever viewed by mankind that offers hope. It actually offers a way to know God personally. I've met some warm-hearted Islamic people, and my heart went out to them. Very sincere. They're right. caught up. They've been caught up by birth into a system. And, and yet there's a writhing turmoil like there is with the atheists, like there is with the unbelievers worldwide, no matter who they are. We're not simply isolating these individuals. Each of us is uncomfortable with ourselves and with life itself until the Prince of Peace steps into our heart, gives us peace, and gives us a new birth and a new life. Carl, isn't that wonderful? It is. Jesus came that we might have life, that we might have it more abundantly now. You know, we've got peace because we have Him, but that we can have eternal life. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. Absolutely. You know, He came that we might have life. Yes. Mm. Now, not only Christians, but they have their eye on Israel, on the Jews. Take a look, please, at this next headline, Hamas. A holy obligation to attack Israel from Judea and Samaria. Oh, my. That breaks my heart. An obligation? Iran's new missile puts Israel in range. They wanted that. And look who it is, Iran. You know what I think? I'm going to ask Dr. Boff. He'll stay over next week. And I would like to discuss what's going on with Iran right now. You know, the, the peace treaty that we're talking about, let's do it next week if we can get him to stay over. And I pray that he will. Oh, I'll be glad to. Um, and there's a reason Iran is specifically involved in treaties. I'll be happy to stay and we'll give a biblical dissertation on that. All right, let's, let's do that. And here we are. Here you see it. Oh, yes, yes, here you see it, one Iranian nuke. What? Three million dead Israelis. That's her goal. Arends Khomeini, increasing global hatred of Israel is a sign of divine help. Oh, that shows where their heart is. Iranian official calls to wipe out the Zionist regime. Well, you know, I'm going to go once again to Dr. Ball. And I'm going to ask him something. Not only are they threatened, but is it a critical time, a critical time, for Israel. They've got to do something, Carl. It is a critical time for Israel because their very existence is very tenuous. It is only sustained by the promise and the grace of Almighty God. It is a critical time for Israel. Amen, Carl. And it's wonderful to know that we have a message. You brought it in just a few moments ago, a message for this mess age, don't we? I'm going to refer to something that's very close to you, though. You're saying, Rex Ali gave us a lot of headlines, but I need something personally. Maybe yes. you are on drugs. Do you need deliverance? Maybe you're on alcohol. Do you need deliverance? Maybe you like illicit sex. Do you need deliverance? The Lord came, died for our sins. Will you open your heart to Him, the Savior of the world, the only Savior? and ask him to come into your heart. I'm going to ask Dr. Baugh if he'll pray this prayer of acceptance right now. Carl. On today's program, we've talked about those who live in turmoil, but in essence, we all live in turmoil, and the hope for the entire human race is Jesus Christ. Will you just bow your head and pray this simple prayer with me right now? Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know you sent Jesus Christ to die for me. He shed his blood. I want my sins covered with his blood right now. I open my heart to you, Lord Jesus. Come in, save me, and I will serve you with all my heart. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer. If you did, you've just been forgiven of everything that you don't want there. How wonderful it is to walk with the Lord. I'll send you this little book. There's my address. If you write to me, first steps in a new 
direction. The Lord will walk with you. Now, we have a brand new offer for you, and it is wonderful. Coming soon, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. How can that happen? Take a look, please, at the new commercial. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, Israel's Messiah, and Christianity's Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This appearing of Christ to set up the soon coming Judeo-Christian New World Order is about to happen. According to 1,000 biblical prophecies from the lips and pens of 16 Old Testament Jewish prophets and eight of the 12 New Testament apostles, this will become the most monumental event in history and Micah announces that this will immediately usher in God's final and eternal government. He states, the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Christianity's New Testament apostles describe this global ruler as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Isaiah, another prophet of Israel said, unto us a child is born, virgin birth, and unto us a son is given, second coming of Jesus. When this glorious hour happens, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Wow! Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and deliver us from this global mania, mass slaying, endless terrorism, and unending war. For further details, order coming soon, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. Can this really happen? There's my 800 number and there's the address. Please write. And with your order, I'm going to be sending you a wonderful gift, a book written by Jack Van Impey, Israel's Final Holocaust. He knew this was coming. So here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order coming soon, the Judeo-Christian New World Order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day. 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexel. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Make the call right away because you need to have this to understand what's going on in the world. And my gift with your order, oh my, it's a wonderful book. Jack knew, as I said, this was all going to happen. So he wrote about it, and now we speak about it. Wonderful. So make the call. I want to leave you with this very, very, very good thought. When doubt knocks at the door, let faith answer. How good. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we, so very much. Bye-bye.